بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على رسول الله الكريم The purpose of this program really was just a visit to a dear friend of mine and a tazia with regards to the passing away of his beloved father. May Allah Taala make this program as a means of tasalli for him and his family. And may Allah Taala make it as a means of rafa darajat for his father. And may he make it that whoever hears it after this, perhaps this is the first time in a program I am mentioning what I will mention today. But in that there will be unique tasalli for any person who finds death in his family. Sometimes you will find death of the one who is above you. And sometimes death you will find of the one who is under you. And sometimes you will find of the one who is around you. Your wife will pass away, your husband will pass away. The scenes of death one is that sometimes it was a murder, sometimes it was an accident, sometimes it was a sudden sickness, sometimes he just passed away in his sleep. So the scenes are one issue. And then is the after part, that how to carry on life after the death of the individual. So we are the only people in the world who know so much about what happens after the eyes close, that we can practically go into that journey even before the journey is made. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first time his wife radiallahu anha asked, she said, what is this issue of the grave? Because a Jewish woman came and she asked for some help. So she was given the help and when she was going, she just said that may the Almighty Allah protect you from the punishment of the grave. So Nabi Sallallahu wife, she was shocked like, what is this grave issue? Because we see the person being buried, but it's a small pit. So when Nabi Sallallahu came back, she asked him, what is this grave? And the answers of Rasulullah Wasallam were placed on wahi. Either a verse of Quran would come with the entire tashrih. So Nabi Wasallam was taken on a journey already to Jannah and Jahannam. But into the world of the grave he hadn't been taken. But on that question that she asked, we can understand what picture was put in front of him, what a wahi. That his wife radiallahu anha says after that, in nearly every dua of his, I used to hear him saying, Oh Allah, save me from the punishments of the grave. What a thing opened up for him. And then he taught the Ummah the duas, that Oh Allah, will you make my grave a garden from the gardens of paradise? So we would wonder now, how can that grave be a garden? And what happens in a garden? In a garden, you don't just go in the garden, say let's go for a picnic, you go to the garden. And when you reach the picnic, what do you do? Do you just sleep? But in a garden you enjoy, you meet, you talk, you pluck from the fruits, you walk around, go for a stroll. But the grave is a grave, what me and you have understood, is that when that person is put in the grave, then he will have a few questions, and then if he is successful, he will be told, sleep. And then what we understood is that he is now going to sleep till the day of Qiyamah. <coughs> because of that day, we all feel that in my own house, if someone tells me, you just go in one corner and sleep, but remember you alone in the house. The house is dark. You don't know what's happening around you. So automatically you feel edgy. And you feel, how long I'm going to sleep? So a person, when he thinks of the grave, he suddenly becomes scared that I don't want to die. Because no one likes to be alone. So you will meet a man who is very old, very sickly, suffering in life. So you will really feel that you will make dua, oh Allah, let him pass away quickly. But when you ask him, he will say, make dua, that I love them. So you will wonder, what do you have there is to love for? But the problem is, me and you don't know what's going to happen after we die. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa explained it and how he explained it. And then he said to a sahabi radiallahu anh, if you remember what I have taught you, there will be no gift more desirable for you than death. This will be that gift that the man sits and he waits and he waits. Those people who understood the world of the grave, a plague hit that land. So the man on his house is looking at people running away because when a plague hits, 
Then no house knows where death is going to come. So people are packing up and moving out. So as he's looking at them, he says, that he says, oh death, for so many years I'm waiting for you. And you're not coming. And these people are running from you and you're chasing them. So if you want to find someone, find me. I'm ready. But who will ever say I'm ready? Normally because we don't know death. Our condition will be the man who makes dua whenever he gets the chance. That, oh Allah, let me die in Medina Munawar. But then suddenly one day his name gets chosen for Hajj. Now he starts thinking of that dua. Now you don't want to die. So suddenly he reverses the dua. Oh Allah, let me die in Medina, but not this year. There must be some other time. One day. That one day, why? Because no one wants to die. So we will go through a couple of ahadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu where he explained a journey. And when you will understand the journey that the man who is going to die takes, and what happens after, and how he enters into a world of eternal enjoyment, or not eternal, but till the day of Qiyamah, and why the grave was called a garden of the gardens of Jannah, and why this world was called like nothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to a sahabi radiallahu anh, that the easiest example I can find to explain to you all that what's going to happen when you leave this world and you enter into the next. He says perhaps the easiest example is the one of the child in the womb of the mother. As long as that child is in that womb for six to nine months, that womb means everything for the child. Because the child never saw something else. So he can't imagine there could be something else. So no matter how small that womb is, it is big. Because it's bigger than the child. And no matter how uncomfortable I will say it is, but the child says, this is home. I will say, but you're lonely there. The child says, I'm happy here. I will say, you're not getting any food. The child will say, I'm getting the best of food. And the time comes where the child after nine months is told, now it's time to come out in the world. The whole world from outside will tell the child, come out, come out. But the child, because he never saw it, will never believe it. He will say, I'm not coming out. So the mother has to push him, push him, push him. As soon as the child comes out, the first thing that he does is he cries. He cries because he never wanted to come out. You will never see the child coming laughing. But I was waiting. And as soon as he comes, he feels different also. It was warm there, it's cold here. He was alone there, he's surrounded. There was no noise there. There's a lot of noise. So the first is you get scared, shocked. So immediately the nurse will take that young boy to the mother. And the child is still shivering. But as the child is put on the mother's chest, he feels a certain warmth he never felt in the womb. And then he is put to meet with the breast as he takes one sip of that milk. That milk will not be the most tastiest drink in the world. But for that boy who never tasted something like that, this is the milk. In that one sup, that child forgets the entire life of the womb. One sup. And now he will just suck and suck. As he sucks, he will be thinking, why did I stay so long in the womb? I should have come out long time. Then he's only going to be introduced as though now the mother is saying that this is just the beginning. There's still a lot left of the world. You're still locked in a hospital. After three days, you'll be discharged. Then you're going to see families. Every family member will take you and kiss you. Everyone will play with you. Everyone will hug you. I will put you in a cover. You will be looked after in a huge house. Someone will be playing with your legs. Someone will be playing with your hands. For the next one, two years, do the pet of the time. You can't even move now. Soon you'll be crawling. Then you'll be walking. Then I'll get toys for you. Whatever I could not do for you in the womb, now is the beginning of your life. So that part we all went through. And that we can all relate. We'll tell the child that in the womb, what's in the womb? And now you say to a child, you know, nine months you stayed in the womb, you were happy, you want to go back. While the child was in the womb, he never thought there could be something besides the womb. 
So he never wanted to come out. When the child saw what is besides the womb, he'll never want to go back. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he explained that point, then he said, similarly it is you when you reach the end of this life and you get ready for the next. And this world in comparison to the world of the grave is a womb of the mother. Whatever you think you enjoy in here is like what the child thought is enjoying in the womb. There is no movement here, there is no freedom, there is no happiness, there is no luxury. We are living in a world of every happiness is joined with the thought that perhaps tomorrow I'll be sad. Every time someone gives the news, someone is born, then it will either join but the child is not well. Somebody else passed away. Someone was coming to see the child, there was an accident. Every day when you say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, you say Inna Lillah. Every house you go to, you ask the person, house things, the answer will be Alhamdulillah, but. And then the but is very long. And you end up making dua, Allah make it easy for you, Allah make it easy. Every newspaper you read makes you more sad. Every day there's a new war. Every wealth that comes to man's hands, there's a fear of poverty, there's a fear of theft. Every hell that comes is a fear of sickness. The man who got all the hospital plans in the world, he's also sad. That I don't want to get sick. And the man who got no hospital plan, he's also sad. What if I get sick? Where am I going to go? The man who's happy, he's smiling, he's not happy. He's worried tomorrow I mustn't be. This world is like that. No wealth has given man happiness in this world. No comfort has given him, no luxury. Every one of us when you go at night, we lock our doors. Because for us security is the main thing. And we think if only this country can be secure, I have no other worry. We visited those countries that got no worry for security. They put us in a room and they keep the doors open, the windows open, the gate open. So the first few days we can't sleep. Because we're not used to it. Like someone will walk at night, he'll come while I'm sleeping, he'll stab me. He'll say, no, nothing happens here, we don't believe it. Then at least close the window of this room. You don't want to close it, you say, relax, you'll get fresh air. So you'll think there's security in that country, they're happy, they're not happy also. We one problem they haven't got, they got another ten. Every man you meet is in depression or his wife is in depression. Or his daughter is in depression. If he is not sick, somebody around him is sick. This is a womb. It's a jail. It's a prison. Rasulullah sallallahu who saw the next world said, Oh my be, Ummah, how is it that you crying on the death of an individual so much? He says, because when a time comes for a believer to leave this world, all that has happened is he has left his jail cell. I understood this narration when I went and I visited Robben Island. And it is something to understand. There was no real guide, we just walked ourselves. But I looked at the old president, President Nelson Mandela's cell, and where he used to sleep, and then where he used to meet with his friends and they used to talk about politics, and then how he used to smuggle in some letters. That was their life for so many years, 15, 16, until they were taken to the other prison. And you wonder how they survived in this. But this was their jail. This was the beginning of the day, the end of the day. They became used to it. Sometimes there's no one to talk to. Sometimes you're enjoying others. So he became so, so, so close with the other inmates. Like how me and you became close with our families. And now then comes the time when the president is told that the government wants to make a deal. So he leaves the cell of his best friends. And in the deal with the government is that if you're ready to leave this island, then just on the other side there's another world for you. But you must be ready to separate. So at that moment the prisoner can either say, I'm not leaving my friends. I lived with them so many years, I'll die with them. Or he can say to his friends, you know what? Freedom is on the other side. So all of them will say, you're going to be free. He says, perhaps my freedom will be freedom for you also one day. So the day that he is leaving, and this is the point to understand of this narration, When the time comes for a believer to leave this world, 
So the day he was leaving, he must have hugged his friends. They hugged him. Every morning they saw him, every night they saw him. There was also tears on their cheeks. But every one of them was happy. Because they said, you are leaving a prison. All that he had in his prison is one bed and his one pillow. Then they had that water jug and that was all. So every person who hugged him said that, you know what, we're going to miss you, but what's going to happen on the other side is something else. Forget freedom, you're going to be the king over there. When the time of the death of a believer comes, because me and you always thought he's going to now just sleep. So the day we took the janaza to the grave also and we put it down, Ulama has mentioned on the death of a very close member, people cry for two reasons. One is either we cry because we're going to miss the individual, or we cry because we feel sorry for the individual. They said to cry because you miss the individual is sunnah. It's very good. You must take it out, don't keep it in. And to cry because you feel sorry for the individual. They said that is because you don't understand what's happening with him. If you could ask him what's happening. So he will say my example is like the example of a person who went for Umrah. He took his riyals with him, he took his rands, his dollars, he took his passport. The whole family accompanied him to the airport. So then suddenly he took the airport. The young child at home is saying, Daddy, Daddy, I'm missing you. Mommy, Mommy. But the parents are also missing the children, but they got no time to miss. So while everyone here is crying and saying, Mommy, I wonder what's happening with Mommy, Daddy. Mommy and daddy are so busy. So when they reach, you see no phone call coming. Not because they don't like you, because they got no time for you. They're going around the house of Almighty Allah. They're in another world. When a child is born, he's put on the breast of the mother. One suck of that milk makes him forget the entire womb. When a believer passes away, as soon as he's taken up by the angel, he enters into a world of ecstasy. He sees the angels of Jannah coming with fragrances of Jannah and a cloth of Jannah. And the angel of death says to him that Almighty Allah has sent salam for you. On that word he goes into an ecstasy. He forgets everything and everyone. As he goes up into the heavens, he's seeing the world of the heavens around him which he never ever experienced. He has angels around him saying, hey, what a wonderful smell, who's this man? The angels are saying, next time we will talk, let's carry on. How fast and what a breeze he's going through. What and what environment he's meeting. I used to always think of this narration, that when a believer passes away, the normal first thing to happen is the exam of the grave. But before the exam of the grave, it comes in the narration. The angel takes him up to the heavens. And when he comes close to the highest heaven, then that voice is heard. That is the voice of Almighty Allah. And that voice is that my servant has been truthful. So I always wonder that how come this happens before the exam also? Because then it comes, now take him back into the grave and let his exam start. So what came to my mind is when a man passes away, like how that small child is put on the breast and the enjoyment of that mother's milk makes him forget everything. When a believer passes away, the first gift of death that he is given is he is allowed to hear Almighty Allah directly. It is for that enjoyment and thrill that once he hears that, my servant, one was when the angel said, Your Allah gave salams. That itself was more than enough. But it was not enough. It had to be that his ear will now hear his Allah himself saying, My servant. 
the enjoyment of that sound will make him forget everything and everyone. So where the whole world will be crying for him, he is in another world. This is not the end of his enjoyment, just is just the beginning. Like the mother says to the child, it's only starting. Death is the beginning of your paradise. So then the angel says to him, comes in the narration, he points to his family. And he says, look at your family crying for you around your dead body. Would you want to go back to them? Rasulullah said, every believer answers. He says, what? To a world of poverty, to a world of sickness and worry, to a world of fear and insecurity. He says, after seeing what I saw, I will never go back. That is the time where this world being a womb will become apparent to me and you. That once you die, there is no other death after that. Rasulullah sallallahu was on the last. He was going through extreme pains of death. The pains of death that he had to suffer was more than anybody else perhaps suffered. A sahabi radiallahu anhu came and put his hand on the cloth of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa On the cloth he felt the fever. So he pulled his hand back and he said, Oh Allah's Nabi, your fever is not normal fever. He says, it's like double fever. He really meant as exaggeration, you can't get double fever. Because when fever reaches a certain degree, the doctor will tell you even 10 more than this. And it will lead to brain damage. Keep it down the fever. You cannot get a double fever. Rasulullah sallallahu said, We the Anbiya alayhi salam go through double. That as you thought it's a double fever, it is a double fever. So the Sahabi radiallahu anhu was like, how? So it was that Allah tawarukala gave us double reward also. So he was going to put us in a double difficulty. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha says, before this I used to always think that if I see someone at the time of death going through difficult times, then I used to think that don't you want to die? She says, then I saw my beloved husband sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time of death. And I understood that the pangs of death is not a sign of being accepted or being rejected. There are times where Almighty Allah makes the pangs of death very easy on the individual. He hardly experiences anything and is gone, a martyr dies on earth. And there are times where an individual is made to go through it. To such an extent that Rasulullah sallallahu was putting his hand in the water and rubbing it. And then he was saying, La ilaha illallah, the pains of death is really something. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was blessed with the strength of over a hundred men. For him to say at that moment, this is painful, it means it was really, really, really painful. But on that he also explained to the Ummah, Almighty Allah when he has written certain levels for individuals, very, 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 very high, unimaginable, then finally to make an individual reach up till there. Almighty Allah sometimes at the end of his life puts him through difficulties. Sickness comes. Cancer is one sickness that the treatment of it is also a punishment. It's also a hardship. It's also a torment. The man is in pain all the time. The medicine is making more pain on top of it. Every other faith who suffers with cancer will have no answer. It is only the people of Iman and Islam that if you visit them then they will say that in this I have hope of attaining those high, high places which Allah wrote for me, which comes in the ahadith that with your actions you would never have reached it. Because of which, oh my servant, I'm going to put you now through a few days of difficulty. You just hold on firm and where you're going to reach after that you can never imagine. Even the difficulties of this world for me and you is a bounty. So the first, the beginning is the sound of Almighty Allah. The father has gone for hajj now, he's going around the house of Allah. He forgot to phone. After his tawaf is finished, he still is making his safa marwa. He forgot his phone in the hotel because he's not bothered of me and you. 
where everyone at home is crying, he's in another world. Finally, he's tired, tired, tired. So now he goes straight to sleep. Similarly, it comes when a man passes away. First, he goes through that journey to the heavens. Then he comes back into the world of the grave. And the believer gives the answers. And may Allah tabarakallah make us all, we give those answers. And it comes that because of Iman, Almighty Allah gives special help in the grave. Now when the answers are given, then the person is tired, he just finished his Hajj, his Umrah. Safa Marwa is finished. He goes back, he doesn't even want to eat, he just wants to sleep. When the exam is finished, all the man years is, my servant has passed. So open up the windows for paradise. The first time in your life that you will smell Jannah is when you die. Just the smell of Jannah is Jannah itself. Just the smell of Jannah. Because it comes when a man on the day of Qiyamah, where Allah Taala will want to show what is this world. So the narration mentions the man who enjoyed the hard or who went through the hardest and the most difficult of times in this world. We hear of what's happening in Burma, what's happening in Syria. And we always say, why to the Muslim Ummah? But one thing we know is, oh my sister, my brother, as soon as you die, you will not have to suffer another death. Day and day is your paradise. As for the one who persecuted you, who oppressed you, who laughed at you, mocked at you, who massacred and tortured and killed you, he's not going to die one death. For him, the day he dies, it's only the beginning of death. His world of torture will only start and yours ended there and there. So that person who went through the most hardest and hardest of times will be put not into Jannah. The angel will carry him at a point where the fragrance of Jannah will just pass. That fragrance will hit him. There and there the angel will say, Oh my friend, explain to me of this world. What was it? How quickly it went? Was it hard or was it easy? So the man will one smell of Jannah, he will say that by Allah, I cannot remember much. But I cannot remember one day of difficulty in this world. One smell of Jannah will make him forget it all. This is our womb. We all worried in this world. And we all want to make this world. But no matter how much you try, the world will never get made. Our job is just to live through this world. We just trying to get to that other side. Our shore is there. So there are other people in the world who think the ship is the house. So they will carry on fixing the ship. They will carry on making it smarter and smarter. But me and you, we go to the top of the ship and we look. That when is the shore coming? Because I already built my house on the other side. My family is waiting for me. My life is that side. We are not men for the ship. So in the ship sometimes they will say to you, since you are not doing much on the ship, you take one cabin. So that's what we and you got. The people of Iman were not going to be given the highest of this world. For some it was being, going to be very hard exams. For others it was going to be a little bit easier. Some were going to get houses. Some were going to get shacks. Rasulullah's own house was such that when it would rain, he would make sajda in the mud. When he would perform salah in his house, Aisha radiallahu anha would draw her feet back. Their sleeping quarters was their living quarters, was their eating quarters, was their kitchen. The very mat would be rolled up, that was the kitchen. The fire would be lit, something would be made. The lap would be rolled out, that was the sleeping quarters. The wrap will become half, that will be the musalla and that will be the place for you to rest. One room was there, everything. Because for some it was not meant to have a huge place. Me and you in South Africa, sometimes I think when I see a Dastar Khan, that as though Almighty Allah gave us Jannah already here. Because it wasn't supposed to be like this. 
We in the shop, because we're so weak as though in the shop they said to you, you're not going to manage in that cabin in the bottom. We know when we go for Hajj and Umrah, we see many other countries coming. All of them say South Africans are the most spoiled. Because even in that five star hotel, we complain there also. The others don't have that. From there we walk to the Kaaba, we say very far. But you just look behind you, you'll see people, old people walking from we don't know where. I went to go visit one family member of mine. After I came out, I said I should have brought my wife also. Just to see where other people stay. The only thing you can call that stay also. But they stay. But we have been spoiled from day one till the ending. So Allah's favor that He has given us is here. But our world is there. And never ever think that this is the world. So the smell of Jannah is now coming in the grave. And then there is He's hearing the bed of Jannah coming in. And the breeze of Jannah. And the sounds of Jannah. And then the angel says to him, now sleep. So that's what we understood. After that we thought he's going to sleep till Siyam. But it's not going to be like that. When that man wakes up the next morning in the hotel, he got a five star hotel near the Haram. So he has the Fajr Azan, he wakes up, where am I? Again he forgot to phone his family. He never even buy the phone cards then. But the family is worried, they cry. So we on the first day of the Janazah, everyone is sad. But the one who went, he is not sad. He needs an angel to tell him, you know what, why don't you phone home? No time. So it comes in the narration, when the eyes open, he even hears the angel saying, to the other people of the grave, because the grave is not what we see where we bury. The grave is not of this world. There is this dunya which is small like a womb. There is Akhirah which is coming after. There is an in-between world which is called Barzakh. The in-between world. We just put the body there as a respect for the body. That body will get eaten up. That body can be eaten by animals, by sharks. It could be burned into bits and pieces. That body which is in the grave is like the skurta of mine. The skurta really only has value when I'm wearing it. When I'm wearing it and you punch me, the kurta will also feel the pain. Say, ah. But if I take the kurta out and I hang it, you can carry on punching it whole life, I'll feel no pain after that. When that body is put in the grave of this world, many a time an accident takes place. Or Syria, Iraq, Burma. At that time the pictures that are taken which shouldn't be taken. Because many a person sees it and he can't control it. But when he looks at it, he really thinks that, what is this? But one thing you can understand, that those soldiers were cutting that kurta which was hanging. As for the individual, as soon as death hit, that individual had taken out the kurta. You carry on eating my kurta, I'm gone to my Allah. You carry on. So the world will see cut fingers, cut nose, cut body pieces. But the one who went said, carry on cutting. The Sahabi radiallahu anh says, cut more. He says, so when I stand in front of my Allah, I'll present all my pieces. And I will say, if barakah has to fall, then if the man is in a hole, it has to fall in one spot. He says, I got hope that in all my spots now, barakah has to fall there, barakah, because it's all over. He said, I'll come with all my pieces. The martyr says that. I'll come with everything in front of Allah and say, Oh Allah, cut for you. That body which goes into Barzakh now, suddenly it hears the angel saying, Hold on, hold on, leave him, he's tired. But the people don't want to leave him. Because whoever passed away from the families, they got the news that you now passed away. So it's like you reached back home after a long journey. And in the world of Barzakh, it isn't like today we live with WhatsApp. In today's time, if someone even comes from Hajj, before people will go and ask him, how was the Hajj? Today they won't ask him, they'll tell him, we know more about Hajj than you. 
You only saw it from one angle, I saw it from all the angles. I had it on my phone, I had it on the screen, I had it everywhere. But in that world there isn't that. In that world when you pass away, you are the it. Because you are the last man that left this world. So they all come to you. Uncles and aunts come to you. Grandparents come to you. It is the first time you get the chance to directly meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you start talking with everyone. You start enjoying. There's no barriers in that world of barzakh. So you're meeting this auntie, that uncle. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, what a long discussion starts. Everyone is asking some question. Everyone is asking some question. And the unique thing in the narration that one question was also mentioned. Because normally what you think your wife will ask regarding you. She died. Ten years have gone. Somebody else of the town passed away. So your wife also pitches up there. So she wants to ask regarding her husband. What she'll ask? She'll ask, did he marry after me? It comes in the narration. So I thought that's a Gujarati woman. That <laughs> Who will they will worry about what's happening? But it don't affect her really. It's just, like I said, I thought he was going to get married to her. I always thought so. That's that world. They still never phone home. Another world he is. The angel then says that wrap it up. Everyone is tired. Go. Go. How many days of this world has gone past? We won't even understand. But that is Jannah. The murder of Jannah starts when you die. <coughs> then a man's eyes open. He asks the angel, this is a garden. You must do something in the garden. So the angel says, just wait. Almighty Allah is sending aeroplanes. Comes in the ahadith, green birds then land. And the souls then jump in green birds. Every bird will carry so many souls. Now as that green bird starts flying, it flies into real paradise, Jannah. You are only in Barzakh, but with the bird you are allowed to take a drive into paradise. As you enter real Jannah, then why are you going into Jannah? Because everyone, the angel is going to say, I'm going to show you your garden. I'm going to show you your garden. I'm going to show you your garden. Each person's eyes are made strong. And then the angel will point out, that's yours. So his eye will be made for his paradise. It goes far. It goes huge. He will go into every palace, into every building, into every room. He will see the kitchens. He will see whatever he wants to see. What Allah has created for him, he will see it. That's why it comes in barzakh. Whenever man can, he'll say to the angel, when is qiyamah? Let it happen. Because every day is being shown that screenshot. This is yours. But the unique thing of that journey, which helps me and you to understand what we need to do to the dead man. Because for the dead person, I told you, tears we cry for ourselves. To take out that separation, grief, we cry it out. Many people, however, cry for the dead man. The dead person, if he died with Iman, he doesn't need tears. He's in another world where if he could, he'll phone home. And sometimes it happens. that The wife is crying, crying so much. So finally the dead person asks Almighty Allah permission. Can I go in the dream of my wife and say, you know, I'm enjoying myself so much. The only thing that's making life tight for me is I hear you crying. Stop crying. Because that mother now who is there for Umrah, she's enjoying it. She's making Umrah tomorrow. Let's go another Umrah. Then suddenly she sees a WhatsApp. Please phone home because your daughter's not eating. That's the only time she says, Hey, my daughter. Now when she phones home, daughter wants to speak. Mommy, mommy, mommy got no time. She's running for third Umrah. The only thing she says, Mommy is okay. Don't cry, but please. Because your tears are making life tight for me. I'm enjoying myself. So they don't want the phone call. But now as they went for the third Umrah, 
And while they're going tawaf, tawaf. And that man making tawaf really taught everyone in the, around the Kaaba is the pious of pious. So he even kept his money on his side here nicely. As he was making his tawaf, making his tawaf. After he goes to cut his hair, he looks for his money, the whole thing is cut. Now he's shocked. He can't pay the man for his haircut also. He's looking at him, where's my money? All gone. Suddenly now he thinks of his family at home. Now he says, where's the phone? Quickly now he's going to make a phone call. Why he'll make a phone call? Not to say I'm missing you also. The man that side never misses the man this side. The only thing he's going to phone for is that you know what? I need some money. The man who has passed away does never ever find a need to phone home and say, I'm missing you. He doesn't miss us. Yes, on the journey with the angel, as they are going past his paradise and he sees it built up, built up, built up, and he will find one garden that is there and there is a building, but the building is not completed. It has to happen. So he will say to the angel, why an incomplete building? The nature of man that is. He doesn't like anything incomplete. So the angel will say very easily to him, that in this world whatever you did was called cash. It entered into your account, we transferred it into building material, and building was coming up. Didn't you hear one subhanallah is a tree, one alhamdulillah is a tree, this is a building, this is a building, you purchased another garden, so you were buying left, right and said, and he said, suddenly you passed away. On your debt, your personal account came to a freeze. It stopped. So the suppliers of the material said, we can't supply. That's where the man now says, my money is gone. So as soon as he comes back to the world of his barzakh, and the angel says, go to sleep before he sleeps. He says, if only I can phone home. Because those guys at home got lot money. All they need is send something for me also. I don't need lot, I only need one extra building put up. Just finish the job, then forget about me. But it never happens like that. Because in the beginning we all make dua for those that passed away. And it comes the next time he goes into his paradise, his eye is only for that spot. He's not worried of all the others. So he sees it built, he says, what happened? He said, somebody sent for you. You want to enjoy a relationship with the dead. When that man who's in Umrah phones home, he says, send money. So you're putting in his account. He'll carry on looking at that phone, waiting for that SMS. Money came in your account, you can withdraw it. He is looking, looking. Money is not coming, he phones the second time. All along he wasn't phoning. So you say that my your son is gone, he's going to do it just now. How are you daddy? He said, don't worry how I am, where's the money? I need to pay for my hair. That man looks at his phone. Comes in the narration, so much of detail is given that he asked the angels from where did this come from? And the angel says, so and so made dua for you. Well, you never get that. Soon as a person passes away, Lord people make dua. But as days go, normally we all forget the dua. So it comes in the narrations, one man will see a mountain of reward, which is called cash, like gold. He will say to the angel, from where did this come? <coughs> the angel will say, today your son thought of you. This most likely means that man had passed away years ago. So the normal is you forget your father after that. So because so many years went, and then one day that boy thought of his father. So on that spot when he thought, he just said, and the angel even says, all he said was, Oh Allah, forgive my father. He only said one sentence. Almighty Allah was so happy that what a son, you never forgot your father. A whole mountain was put up. And this will give you lot. You want to enjoy a relationship with those that have passed away. Never ever forget them in dua. They don't need tears. 
They need cash. Because they see the building is coming up. One after the other, one after the other. So that's the beginning stuff. Every day there will be a new excursion. It comes in the narration, sometimes those birds will fly to the arush of Almighty Allah. That itself will be an ecstasy. Some of those birds will perch under the throne of Almighty Allah. The winds that come there of a different caliber level. It comes from there, the bird will look and everyone will see paradise. Like what you call bird's eye view. From the highest of highest you will see it all. Sometimes the birds will eat from the fruits of Jannah. So the juice of the fruit will move in the soul, in the body of the bird. And every soul will take that ecstasy. Sometimes it will drink from the cool waters of paradise. This is the world. That is when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, if you remember what I'm teaching you, death will be a gift you will always wait for. And when you will see someone in your family passing away, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, on the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was his word. And Umar radiallahu anh, said he hasn't passed away. He's only like unconscious. Like Musa salam went to Mount Tur. He spoke to Almighty Allah. He came back. He said Almighty Rasulullah sallallahu has gone but he's coming back. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, then said that this is the Nabi of Allah. He's too beloved to Almighty Allah to allow him to go through death two times. That once he has passed away, game done. He's out. He's not going to ever bring him back again. It's too much of love he got for his Rasul. He'll never do it. When man passes away, at that moment, what I say to the dead person, you made it. We still left behind. Rasulullah sallallahu before passing away, he went to visit the martyrs of Uhud. They had passed away about eight years before his death. They had never seen the conquest of Makkah Mukarramah. They never had the chance to enjoy when the wealth of Islam was coming in. They died at a time when Islam was like suffering. But what words he said at that moment. He said, O oh people of Uhud, how fortunate you were that you never have to see those exams which we had to see. That Allah took you all away early. Many a time a young child passes away so everyone says shame. He never saw the world. What I say to him is how fortunate you Allah took you away. You never have to go through what I have to go through. You are not going to be tested day and night. You are not going to have fears all around you. Go on. Your exam is over. This is this world. We sat in the exam room. The lights are on. The papers were given. Everyone's answering. In our madrasa we say three hours is maximum. But one hour you must sit. So majority of the students in about 40 minutes they finish their exam. Now everyone starts becoming itchy. I want to go. So that's the hardest part that when one hour comes to an end and you see all your friends walking out and you still sitting with Lord questions. At that moment you don't cry and you say, hey, I feel sorry for you. You say, you look at him and you say, how lucky he is going out early. I'm stuck. I still got Lord questions to answer. He's gone. When man dies in this world, look at him with that eye, that, oh my friend, you made it. You went with Iman, your game is done. Me, I don't know. May Allah Tawarukullah grant us understanding of this issue. I will end with one dream which one friend of mine had, or two dreams, which will make us like finally get that last understanding of this issue. One boy once, he wrote one letter to me, or an email, and he explained or he asked that please make dua that my father's kidneys are failing and quite bad the condition is. And So the answer I wrote to him was Almighty Allah must do for your father what is best for him. If life is good, keep him alive with afiyat. And if not, may Allah take him with iman and salamati. 
So perhaps he never understood and I never understood his understanding. So he thought I made a bad dua. Like, like I cursed his father. He got upset a little bit. That I'm asking for dua, you killing my father. So he wrote back that I don't want my father to die. So then we had a conversation on the phone because he phoned me after that. So I explained to him that see, let's just say your father comes out of hospital. Because you want to make his khidmat. Let's say he comes home, one of two things can happen. Within the next two or three years, he can become paralyzed. And then he will be at, on the bed. And you will have to make his khidmat. You will manage. He said, I'll manage. I said, but it won't be easy. It won't be easy for him also. No one likes to be a burden. And it won't be easy for you. And I said, a time comes where every day when you're making your father's khidmat, You'll also be making dua, oh Allah, let him go. It's natural. A child who is sick, the mother makes dua, oh Allah, let him love. But when me and you will get sick, our children will make our khidmat. But they'll make the khidmat with the dua, oh Allah, take him nicely. That's this world. So he said, he never understood it can happen that. I said, okay, if that's not going to happen, let's say your father gets healthy. But then means that his exam then is not finished. In the hospital he could have died and he had Iman, he was gone, made it. Let's just say he comes back and Almighty Allah hasn't written a good ending for him. So within the next two years he falls, gets strong again. And he falls in love with a white woman. Your mother now years of the affair, she's finished. In the love with that woman he takes out his beard, he takes out his kurta. And a time comes, he loses his iman. And then he dies. I says, are you going to stand on the day of Qiyamah and say, Oh Allah, my father. I says, at that moment you will say, Oh Allah, if death is good now, let him go. Because I don't want one second of his life if death is not good. If death is good for him, let him go. If life is not good, don't keep him. But he never understood that issue perhaps. It just happened that his father passed away within the week. And then he wrote to me this dream of his. And I narrated this at many Janaza houses and it really had a unique effect on me. He saw in the dream that his father was upstairs and he was downstairs. So upstairs means like the year after, downstairs means dunya. Because in the dun- our world also downstairs is the kitchen. And upstairs is the bedroom. You go upstairs to rest. Downstairs you do the work. That's why at night you say, just put off the lights and go upstairs. And then upstairs there's no work here. So the father was enjoying life and you still working. The father was like a big man. And then in the dream, the father becomes like a child in a napkin. Then he laughs, 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 and then he becomes a big man again. So that was one part he remembered. And the second part was the father pointed to him and said like this, you also come up. So he really wrote the dream because of the second part. That me and you, if we see our sister in the dream, who passed away last year, and she comes to make salam, next morning we wake up, we shivering. Because we say the dead came to fetch me. I don't want to go. So he saw his father calling him, he got scared. And I'm still young. So he wrote... So few things came to my mind which I answered. I said a couple of things I have understood from this dream. One is that your father is a very fortunate man. Because that baby what you saw, it comes in the narration when a man goes for hajj. And his hajj is accepted. Then he returns like a baby. Meaning no sin at all on him. I says it seems your father reached Almighty Allah like a baby. So that's very good. But I says, but something else was shown to you in the dream, that when you saw him becoming a big man, and then a baby, and then a big man with a napkin, he was giving you a message, that my son, at the end of my life, you really wanted to be khidmat of me, I know that. And had I been brought home, perhaps I would have a napkin on also. And perhaps you would have changed my napkin every day. And perhaps you would have still hugged me and said, you my father. And perhaps I would have spoken and enjoyed your company. But in the end of the day, you would have changed my napkin 
Like how a grown man changes the napkin of a grown man. That every time I would mess my trouser, you would change it, but you would give that look. You would look the other way. I could see in your eyes you were not happy. He says, but by my Allah, yeah, I'm being pampered like how a baby gets pampered. A baby also misses the napkin. But when the mother changes the baby napkin, the entire scene is different. There the mother hugs. There the mother kisses. There every mess of the child also is a thrill for the mother. He says, you would have changed my napkin like an adult changes an adult. By Allah, I'm being pampered like a baby. What's better for me? You would never have made khidmat like how my Allah is making khidmat. And then finally I told when your father pointed to you like this, he wasn't saying you're going to die now. All he was saying is in the end of your life, you were making dua, oh Allah, let my father not go upstairs. So your father is saying, after I saw what happens upstairs, I am telling you, you rather start making dua, oh Allah, let me go upstairs. You were calling me downstairs, it's all happening upstairs. That world is there. Let this dream serve as a wake-up call for me and you. When death comes to me or to my family, then think of this man who is upstairs, who is saying, it's all happening. To be pampered by Almighty Allah, and you want to hold on to the person and say, no, I'll look after. No one. One girl passed away at a young age, so her friend cried a bit because of that close relationship, she had a dream. In the dream, the friend knocked on the door, the dead person. So she opened, she said, I thought you were dead. She said, no, I'm living. I came to visit, you're not inviting me for tea. So the dead person walks in the house, the living person says, yes, tea. She prepares the dastar khan, she makes, she takes out lovely, lovely biscuits of this world. She puts it on the dastar khan. So the dead person who's sitting, the girl, she looks at the dastar khan, but she's not eating. So the loving person says to the dead person, why don't you eat? These are lovely, fresh. I just made it. So the dead person had said one sentence which is fast. An alarm clock. She said, if you could understand what my Allah is giving me, you will feel ashamed to call this food in front of me. If you could understand what my Allah is giving me, you will feel ashamed to put this and say, yes, food. So when that man reaches the end of his life, for me and you, is you made it. I will cry for you because I miss you. I will never cry for you because I feel sorry for you. You're gone. That's why when we enter the graveyard, we say, Assalamu alaikum, O people of the grave. And then we say, Wa inna insha'Allah. And may Allah make it very soon, we want to come with you also. We also want to finish our exam and go out. How long are we going to stay in this world of gham and worry? 60, 70, 80 years. Some are fortunate after 20, Almighty Allah says, Come, my servant, and you're gone. Some are told to wait longer. The quicker that death comes, death is tuhfatul mu'min. The gift of a believer is death. When it comes, grab it. Say to the angel, I was waiting. How long I waited? And even if that man is not waiting, Wallah, if you ever hear the angel saying, Your Allah has sent salams, there and there you'll say, I'm going. Finished. This is that world. In this world, whatever you want, you can't get. In that world, it's a different. Man is at the end of his life. And Almighty Allah opens the scenes of the grave for him. So at that time also he's like me and you. He say, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. So he looks at his wife, he looks at this one, he looks at that one, he talks to all. Then he starts crying, he says, I remember this day, that day, that day. Then he just starts crying, sobbing, he says, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. His wife is crying, don't die, don't die. Then Almighty Allah suddenly shows him Jannah. Day and day is quiet. Now wife thinks he's in Sakarat, but he's not in Sakarat, he's looking at Jannah, he forgot her. Just now he was crying, I'll never leave you, never leave you, he forgot her one shot. 
Then he sees the door of Jannah opening. He is already old, 60, 65, 70. So he sees the door of Jannah opening, he forgot a double. And then from that door of Jannah, he sees one pretty whore of Jannah walking through. And she says, I am made for you. There he forgot her forever and ever. Few minutes ago he was saying, who will look after my Rabia? If I die, who's going to look after? Who's going to look after? Suddenly he saw the whore of Jannah. So he said, Allah will look after I'm sure. That's, he forgot her. We'll forget our families, they'll forget us. Everyone will forget everyone. When the time of death comes, it's not a sad moment for that believer. Death has brought the gift of life. May Allah Tawarukala make our deaths also happy death, enjoyable death. The poet says, when you entered the world, you entered crying and everyone around you was laughing. He says, now what you have to do is so much of good that when your death comes, then you can leave the world in the condition that everyone around you must now be crying and you must be laughing. When you entered, you were crying. Everyone was laughing. Da, da, da. He says, do so much of good that when the time of death comes, you leave everyone crying and you go laughing. May our deaths be like that. May the marhum's death be like that. May Allah Tawarukala make death a gift for all of us. Let us not run away from death, let us run to death. A child doesn't want to come out of the womb because no one told him what's... Rasulullah Wasallam told us what's out of the womb. He told us, don't get thrilled with this world, it just looks nice. But when you see what's coming after, the mara of Jannah, then you'll jump, may we all jump. Allah Tawarukala grant us all understanding. And may Allah Tawarukala make the words of Rasulullah Wasallam. A tasalli for every family who sees death in the house and is crying. Who sees an accident and he sees his son pieces in front of him. Who sees something happening, the murder that took place in the house, but is a man of iman. So he looks beyond the body and he sees into the world of barzakh. There, Rasulullah Wasallam's own child passed away, the mother was crying. So he said to the mother, if you want, I will make dua that you will see your child in the swings of paradise. So that was a woman of Iman. Her reply was that, that even if I have to see it, it's always a possibility that my eyes could be deceiving me. But the words of the Rasul of Allah can never be deceiving. So after I heard it from you, it's like I see it. There's my child in Jannah. So these words are unique words of Rasulullah so when he showed you there's another world the dead is not dead they're more alive than me and you our relationship with them is not cut every time we think of them every time we send them sawab every time we visit the grave Nabi Wasallam said where he was buried that whole body gets eaten up but the last but at the end of the spine that remains and on that, on the day of Qiyamah, you will be told to stand. That's like a connection, like how your computer got connections. It's like a device. So he's in another world of barzakh. But every time you land by his grave, a connection is made with that part. And it comes in the narration, he enjoys your company as long as you stand by the grave. And then as you go away, he goes back into the... Meaning that connection just comes to an end. You want to enjoy a relationship with the dead, visit the grave. You want to enjoy, send Isan a sawab. Never forget the dead. You will always enjoy the relationship. You want to be a good son, then always think of your father. You want to be a good daughter. You want to be a good wife, a good husband. You want to be a good father for your children. Never forget the dead. Because even if the grave has come like what we call gone, but the man is not gone. They are more alive than me and you. And every day they look up, who's sending, who's sending? Send. May Allah grant us all understanding.